Yo, what is up? This is Brosis Effect. My name is Michael, this is my sister Nicole, and we're back at you with another reaction video. So, our first video that we're going to react to, the title is MVYQHYLKMP4. <laughs> so it's like a, just, no title was made. So this is with Anthony, so this is Cynical Critic, right? His name is, what is his? Mark. Mark. And so we think this We think this is Anthony. Anthony. We don't know for sure, just we see them together. They're like friends. He, he doesn't have his hair slicked back, so maybe this is in the past. The room looks different. I, I think there's differences. The poster's not on the door. There's no hanging wall. That thing. Sonic poster wasn't on the wall. Yeah, I don't see the string, so it is slightly the different. The is open. Yeah, the closet's closed, so I'm guessing this is pre all yes. the drama. It doesn't appear on the channel, but it is part of a playlist that has all the Muse ARG videos in it, so I think it's unlisted. And then what video are we watching after this? So the other video is going to be a cynical critic why uh, Disney did Star Wars better. Yep, so, so we'll watch that after, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Yep. All right, without further ado, let's watch this weird titled video. Adding aliens to a gritty crime drama really subverts the audience's expectations and provides an experience that's much more engaging than just another boring murder mystery. But unfortunately, people weren't a fan of the changes made by the studio. And so this masterpiece of a film got wrongfully hated on with some people even begging the studio to release He's holding on to his the original cut. I mean, come on, guys. It's uncomfortable. If the studio is going to interfere with a movie, obviously they have a good reason to, and we should just trust that the movie's going to be better for it. I mean, the original Murder Files would have been way worse. Mark? Um, I have to take this. A mark we're in the middle of filming. Hello? Mark? Are, are you okay, buddy? Get out. What? Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out of my house. You piece of shit. Get out. Are you done? Gosh. What's on his neck? You sure you want to do this, Mark? Was that like the same thing that happened to Alex yes, Dale's neck? Yes, I believe neck? so, yep. Does he have that rage from the muse? Mm -hmm. Have it your way. Well, that's why I'm thinking he's uncomfortable. You know how he feels sick and stuff? That's how Alex Dale felt. I'm sorry I had to do that, Mark. You know I don't want to hurt you. You're my best friend. Hey, hey, shh, shh, it's okay, it's okay. I'm so proud of you. There's black this on the floor, kind of like when Alex threw up black. It's almost over now, Mark. Okay, so that was the same voice, I think, as the, uh, the guy he was yelling at. Didn't that voice sound the same? So did... Anthony, if that is Anthony, because it wasn't really confirmed, did Anthony have a muse and then give it to Mark? Yes, I would. That, I think that's what it is. And then because Mark goes crazy, and maybe that's, I don't know, something. Maybe because of his mother, it's personal, and that's why he gets rid of Anthony. But, hang on a sec, let's... Let's just think back to the other one with Alex Bale. So it wasn't until the very end when he got, he got it's sick. It's when he ate the meat himself. Yeah he, was, yeah, he ate the meat. So the muse got him in the neck. He ate the meat. Threw up. 
threw up the black. And that's what that reminded me of, because he was on the floor. It looked like cement, like a beastman again, and there was a puddle of black. And then it sounded like that Anthony guy's voice, we're just calling him Anthony, saying it's almost over. Kind of like Alex Bale's friend, that girl, I forget her name, told him it was almost over. That was over. Anthony doing it to... I think that was the that voice... Anthony? Can we go... You don't, you just see a hand. You can only no, I know, but I, I saw the head on the ground. I'm just trying to... No, uh, he was saying Mark. He literally said Mark. He said Mark? Mark? Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm a little not observant today. No, no, it's okay. I definitely... He was calling whoever was on the ground, Mark. It was Anthony's voice. His voice yes. sounded like the the guy he was filming with and freaking out at before. Just a theory. You guys can confirm. Wow, that was interesting. A big piece that if someone didn't know about, wouldn't find because it's not listed. I wonder if there's any more like that. So now let's look at this Star Wars one. I'm really intrigued to see what he has to say about this. The new Star Wars sequel trilogy is infinitely better than George Lucas's original trilogy. That is a fact. <gasps> the poster on the door changed. Look forward to all the nice comments I'm about to get. Listen, I love Star Wars, oh, but yeah, up right. until recently, it's like cartoon of him. To be honest, I'd never seen the original trilogy. To me, they were just a bunch of old movies that people wouldn't shut up about. And honestly, it wasn't until Disney bought Star Wars that I finally understood what everyone was talking about. The visuals, the adventure, the amazing space battles. I mean, the sequel trilogy to me is what the original trilogy is to a lot of people. So when people wouldn't shut up about the fact that the new trilogy was worse and garbage in comparison to George Lucas's masterpiece of the original trilogy, I figured, well, I mean, everyone loves it, so it must be great, right? Mm-mm. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Yeah, I was very, very, very wrong. Oh my god. George Lucas's original trilogy is an unoriginal, predictable mess. Honestly, I don't even consider it canon. The new Disney trilogy is just so much better than the old trilogy. I, 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 I really don't understand why this is a debate. <gasps> you know, when someone convinced me to actually watch these movies, I was expecting a groundbreaking sci-fi tale set in a galaxy far, far away. Not the boring drivel and completely unoriginal characters that we get here. I mean, take Luke's arc for example. I mean, we start out and they establish he's a farm boy and he's just like, I wanna go out and see things. Wine, 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 wine. What happens next? His aunt and uncle die. He learns he's the chosen one and then becomes the superhero guy he was always meant to be. We've seen this in every single story. It's overdone. It's unoriginal. What's that? He's an orphan too? Man, I can't think of a single character who was also an orphan who's in popular media, such as Batman, Spider-Man, Superman. Do Spider -Man? I need to go on? Oh, now, compare yeah. this to Razor. Man, She's any man. not some chosen one who gets thrown out into the galaxy. She doesn't have any sense of self, no sense of purpose. She doesn't have any family or friends, really. Her story is much more complicated as she's dealing with her own personal identity and where she belongs in the universe. And really, the new cast in general is just far better than the original cast. Rey is a more talented, skilled version of Luke. Kylo Ren is a more complex version of Darth Vader. Poe is a more charming version of Han Solo. Disney updated these archetypes for the modern audience and did it perfectly. Not even a question. <laughs> Listen, I know people complain that The Force Awakens is just a retread of A New Hope, but honestly, I think Force Awakens is just a better version of that film. In Force Awakens, they essentially build on that original structure and make really smart additions like Starkiller Base that just make the stakes much greater than that original film had. Even if you think The Force Awakens is an unoriginal retread of A New Hope, you have to admit that The Last Jedi completely shakes up the status quo and gives you a completely unique, original, great new experience. 
we get the opportunity to really explore some very complex characters and some very rich themes like the complexities of war, romance, and the whole nature of the Force. And honestly, it's my favorite in the franchise. And while Rise of Skywalker admittedly does have a more cut and dry story structure, JJ does a great job in returning to the franchise and bringing the whole trilogy to a perfect conclusion. Both Rey and Kylo's arcs end with such elegance and grace I mean, it, it left me speechless. This is the type of thing that was missing from the original trilogy. <gasps> Listen, I know the original trilogy is old, but my God, the effects do <laughs> well, not. Well, that was the older up. version, oh, man. I mean, he, really, he as cheated soon that as one. New Hope starts and you see that Star Destroyer yeah, following that Rebel Cruiser. I mean, you really get a taste of the lame effects they did what that are they going could, on I display. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's old. It was I'll groundbreaking talk about it at the, the end. time. Blah. But really, it's just laughably bad by today's standards. The sequel trilogy, by comparison, looks beautiful. I Where mean, the production design is amazing. The CGI is all perfectly utilized and realistic. He's um, hiding. Every location and every space feels no, he's in his room, though, fully he's realized and lived in. Um, it's a different angle, and then, though. I mean, and then you have the old trilogy with the cantina. This is creepy. For example, and I mean, it just, it's small. I think everything's creepy. And aliens around, but I mean, all of it just really feels unbelievable. Every location, not just the cantina. I mean, every location, it, it, I mean, really, it just feels like they were limited on resources or something. And, you know, they, they just don't, I mean, they just, you know, they... they Yeah, so that's why I feel like the old trilogy is not as good as the sequels. The sequels are just much better. Um, and so with that said, I'm going to give the old trilogy a 3 out of 10. And then I'm going to give the sequel trilogy a 9 out of wow. 10. Uh, I just, you know, to be honest with you, I just, I, I feel like, the I mean, the sequels are the only canon Star Wars for me flat out. Uh, just, you know, I, I don't feel like there's anything, there's really, I mean, really... <laughs> I don't know how this is a debate. I know it said it earlier, but why is it a debate? The sequels are the best. That's it. And just so you guys know, I have a sponsor that's coming up in a future video, so that's super, super exciting. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I know videos have slowed down a bit, but you know, I've just, I've really just been busy with stuff. So you know, sorry about that. Anyways, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos. I've been your host, The Cynical Critic, and remember to stay cynical. I have a thought. All right, yeah. I was gonna go back and talk about the, the what he commented about first before we got into after we could give your thought. I just, before I forget, was it dark and angled down because maybe the muse is on the ceiling or something? It he was kind of ducking, maybe he turned off the lights. Let's just go back to the reaction part first. So, okay. he definitely mocked uh, the old trilogy a little bit. So, a fun fact with Jabba the Hutt. Jabba the Hutt and the very, very original version of the trilogy. Because they're updated with Better CGI. Yeah. CGI has been updated like five different times or maybe four throughout the years after that film. You know, in the 90s and then the late 90s, early 2000s to modern. Like 2013 or something. The whole point is... Jabba the Hutt used to be, in the very original, was a man. They actually spoke English. And he is like, Han, and then they, you can actually tell if you watch it, because there's like, you can see, you can actually look it up on YouTube. It'll show you the progression of the CGI. So the one that he showed you, of Jabba the Hutt looking all like, you know, not good, the CGI, that was one of the 90s versions of the update CGI. But if you watch it now, you'll notice that Jabba the Hutt looks a lot better because they redid the CGI again more modern so it doesn't look like that I wouldn't mock the CGI because that just doesn't really make sense to mock the CGI in something that was made in the 70s 80s what did you think about the difference between Luke's character arc and Rey's character arc well yeah I mean at first it was the same thing and that was the whole thing like they just redid the movie which I, I agree like yeah the original, you could say, oh, well, that hasn't been done a million times. But back then, it was more original than it was than it would be now. So you can think about it now, like, oh, that's not original. 
well, yeah, but Star Wars is like a big film. It did very well from how it was a very good selling film. And the, one of the things that made it so popular was how good the graphics were for that time period. Yeah, and it's just a very cool concept. And it's, it's, it, it was very unique. Savers, it was original. And it was weirdly numbered and ordered. And let's be honest, sometimes people, there's a reason why those normal stories and heroic stories are popular because it's something that people like kind of fantasize and relate and they connect, to, and they connect yeah. to. So it's not a big deal, but I think it was one of the original movies that did that. I thought The Force Awakens was a good movie, but I did see that it copied it, and it was kind of a little disappointing. Like, come on, you're making a new trilogy. How about you just get original? Don't, like, try to remake something that's already... Ben like, you don't make a... Don't remake a classic. Yeah, they probably did. You could argue it's better because the graphics and stuff, but that's that's common sense. It's going to happen. If if it's not better, that's it's pretty sad. For well, did you notice. think Kylo Ren was a better version of Darth Vader? Yeah, so I, I do agree with that part. The characters are a little more in-depth. It shows the Force more, like the how force strong. The Force was cool. The Force, yeah. they really showed how powerful the Force is. Mm -hmm. And you just did not see that in the the prequel or the They might the not have known trilogy. how to express that in film. It might not have been as easy to well, like now visualize the CGI it. CGI is just so good now yeah. that you can make anything happen. The second one wasn't, you know, as original, it kind of drifted off. But then you can argue the third one is another copycat. Let's sit there bringing Palpatine back. He should have been, you know what I mean? They're just kind of pulling stuff. They can't come up with anything new. And it's all Palpatine. It's the biggest, it's the, mm -hmm. it's the whole battle. I mean, yeah, it ended and it hit. It showed how insanely powerful the Force was. It was like an ultimate display. But it's it just kind of like, it was very good and I enjoyed the movie. But if I'm going to critique it, I, I would say they should have tried to make it a little bit more original. So. Instead of copy. I agree with everything you said so far, but what was her friend's name? Was it Finn? The one yes. that was a stormtrooper before? Mm -hmm. I thought his storyline was interesting and it was new. It was unique. A stormtrooper who left because of good and ended up having the force. That was Does one thing. Does he have thing. the force? It, there's a lot of hints that he has the force in the movie. Well, it might be why he is good. It he, hints he, at it. Well, that might be the reason why he snapped out of being bad. Yeah, so that is new in a sense because, correct me if I'm wrong, there is no st Stormtrooper gone good in the original oh, no, stories. I'm not, so I that don't know, is maybe new. Maybe you go to like comics or something. I, I'm not that. I'm not a Star Wars nerd, but I've definitely gone into the YouTube rabbit hole of this type of stuff, and sometimes I just have random interests. I do like the Star Wars movies, but it does sound like I'm a nerd, but I really am not. I'm not like obsessed. I want posters. All over, but I'm just good at retaining information of stuff that I see on YouTube. Well, and when he was younger, he just yeah. When watched I was younger, I used to watch it all the time. Just like we watched Lord of the Rings and I mean, they're good movies, man. <laughs> like it, it's not like there's anything wrong with being a Star Wars fan. I'm just by nerd. I'm not insulting people that are Star Wars fans. I'm just using it as a term to say that I'm not a Star Wars fanboy. So then, what was your favorite trilogy of? Because there's three. What was your favorite trilogy? I mean... Or do you not have one? Well, I probably growing up when I was younger, I liked the ones with uh, the prequels, but now, like, looking back at them, I mean, they're pretty corny, a lot of... So I think the original three and the new three are just not as corny and just done a little bit better, and I, I would say that. So... So you don't like the ones focused on Anakin? I do like part of it. But they're corny. I like part of it. It's just there there are corny parts. Mm -hmm. And they know, and it wasn't it wasn't Hayden Christensen's fault. It was kind of it, A lot it of a it script. is direction and script. Yes, agreed. So, yeah, you can argue that, you know, Finn is something new, but you can't just adding one new or a couple of new things into something that's copying it and all you do is change a few things, it's kind of being lazy in my opinion, and it's not changing it. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I can... I will say I like a good movie, I like new things to watch, and I wasn't so caught up in that. I was just like, this is something I can go to the movie theater 
and have something to do. It was Because there was yeah. a long stint where there was just nothing coming out that I wanted to see, and it was just a new thing to watch. But I do also get people who really liked the original, why they would feel that way. So I can see all points of view on it. Back to the actual Muse ARG stuff. So overall, in the beginning, in the first half, it was very normal, whatever. The closet door was open again with the light on. It his blinds were closed this time. Often it alternates whether his window blinds are open or closed. And, I mean, the bed had some stuff on it, maybe like a backpack and stuff, but there wasn't anything crazy going on. And then, all of a sudden it switches and he's in the dark. It's a different angle. And like I said, I maybe it's because the muse. But do you have any other thoughts or comments on this video and the ARG? I was trying to see if anything was on his desk. Did you notice that his desk looked messier, or is it just because of the camera angle? I, actually showing his desk. It that. could be that, but I did try to, and I, I looked, I don't think even if we paused we could have read anything. There was like a blue binder with a sticker. I think there's like a paper clip. There was. It was messy, and I was curious what was on there. I was wondering if maybe it was like an insurance thing, or his scripts or what, but I agree, it was nervous messy. and cluttered and stuff, yeah. I think I have a theory that, it's a pretty far-fetched theory, actually. Maybe not super far-fetched. You know that picture changing? Maybe there's a hole in the wall, the door, and he's using that picture to cover it, and the muse took the picture down the road seat to put a new picture up there, and he only puts it up during the videos. Maybe. Hey, I doubt it. There's but. always room for far-fetched ideas here, and I'm wondering if that was like fan art because it did look like him with the glasses and the hair. Thanks for staying with us for that long uh, analysis. Timestamp stuff. Yes, we always love when you guys point out things we miss, so please make sure to comment on this video, give us a like, and subscribe to support our channel, and we will see you in our next video. Peace out. Bye.